Today on the Sack and Stone Team Show, we're here with Margaret Sops with MSP. And what is she going to be talking to us about? She's going to be giving us five tips so that you as an amateur photographer can make your photos look truly pro. Since 1988, I have had one passion only. That is to exceed customer expectations in every facet of the real estate transaction. Our attention to detail and negotiating skills make us the most sought after realtors in our marketplace. Real estate is an industry that's now technologically driven. We at the Sack and Stone team will always be cutting edge. Hey, what's going on? This is Lane and Scott. And we are standing with Margaret Sauce with Margaret Sauce Photography, the MSP. Cool. And some of our clients actually may recognize her because she was doing our client appreciation fall photo fest and she'll be doing it again this Indeed. year. Indeed, we in had October. so much fun last year. We Absolutely. did. We had a great time and we had a great time with Margaret just a few weeks ago. We reshot all of our team photos for our brand new website. So we're going to be looking fabulous everywhere you see us in print and online. And we live in a very Instagram society now. Uh, Everybody's exactly. taking photos. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to look good when they do take Absolutely. photos. And you're here because you're going to give us tips on how to make these photos pop, yes. stand out, and look good, right? Yes, yes. I have a few tips to actually share with you. Okay. And these are commonly, uh, they come up with my clients all the time. And these are tips that you can use not only with your fancy DSLR cameras like we use, but they'll also work for your cell phones, okay. your social media shots, and all that. Awesome. Far away. What you got for us? So number one is light. Okay. That's all photography is really, is the manipulation of light. So you want to make sure that you're getting an even distribution of it. So if you're outside, make sure that you're going under a tree, a ledge, something like that, something that'll cast a shadow. It's a lot easier um, to keep you looking young and fresh and youthful when you don't have big shadows all sure. over your face. Because summer's coming too, so the sun's going to be popping out. Absolutely. There's going to be a lot of shade, and Absolutely. so we just have to find a good... And it's far more overhead as well, which as anybody knows, in an overhead lighting situation, every little crag and wrinkle is going to show up. So okay. if you unfortunately are not stuck with uh, or don't have access to shade of any kind you're going to the beach take uh -huh. a picture of the kids with the sandcastle yeah make sure there's tons behind them okay that way they're not casting directly point. on their face that's a great point as a, as a note when we were out for our photo shoot last week we were at central park in huntington beach and margaret did that she had us moving depending on where the overcast issues were or where the shade from the trees were and i could really see the difference in the proof absolutely. she showed us so absolutely. it works yes lighting yeah. yes big big one lighting so the most important um the second one is all of us tend to be really uncomfortable when we're photographed. I don't know about you guys. This is why I guarantee I'm on this side of the camera. I'm like chupacabra. I'm very happy, uh, difficult to capture. <laughs> um, I do not like being photographed. But um, I had an interesting conversation with one of your team members, actually, when we were shooting, okay. where um, she was expressing to me that when she has pictures that are taken candidly, she's much happier sure. than when she's being posed. And I think that's because if anybody remembers the show Friends, we remember Chandler. Yes, uh, yes, he tends yes. to do this when the camera comes <laughs> up. The best thing one can do, it, it, it is, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. It's, people just don't get comfortable yeah. in front of a camera. The best thing you can do um, is think of something that really makes you laugh. Okay. It's a very simple tip, but it's want really to be effective. Fake, like, ah, no, ah, no, ah, no, ah, no, ah, no, no, nothing okay. like that. Nothing legitimate like that. Lie, legitimate lie. Legitimate, le yeah. Okay. Think about something that legitimately makes you guffaw. You know, your boss falling downstairs, um, <laughs> your kid doing something stupid, a pet that you really enjoy playing with. Something uh, like that that makes you laugh. What's going to do is lighten your whole face, bring that smile to your eyes, and make you look really, really natural, which is kind of what we look for in ourselves. I think you're right on. It's almost subliminal. It's something that kind of all of a sudden comes from within. Absolutely. And then it just pops out, Absolutely. and then you get to capture it. So maybe the bunny ears still work. You know, like, it still makes you laugh. Oh, I, it now. still makes you okay, laugh. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Anything, okay. again, that makes you get on that verge of is going to instantly bring that that gorgeous look that you're looking for to cool. your face. Terrific. Really so now we have great light, we're mm -hmm. laughing, we're looking natural, we're looking we genuine. Are. We are. What else do we need to think about? Let's think about our backgrounds. Obviously, we have a plain, simple background behind us right now because we're the focus, and that's kind of what you want from your photographs We always well. want to be the focus. We want to be the focus. Exactly. <laughs> Particularly if you're being photographed, you definitely want to yes. be the focus. But <laughs> think about all it takes sometimes is a simple shift to the left or to the right. If you have some beautiful um, shrubbery or a nice wall brick, something like that, even the slightest rotation of your camera just to, to have a decent background yeah. can work absolute wonders. And even if you're using a phone now, they have that portrait mode. Yes. So if you have a really cool color in the background, Absolutely. you can use Absolutely. You can kind of blur out that background, which are, as yeah. professionals we like to do, particularly when we're doing portraits. And so pick something that's a cool color. Yeah. Something maybe that um, is contrasting with what you're wearing, if you can go that far. Yeah. Um, but these are really simple, easy things to, to make you pop out, which is what's important. And even though we don't have a thousand or thousands of dollars, like what, $3,000 camera or whatever, 
The phone's pretty good. The phone's pretty good. The phone's very good, which you know is kind of difficult for a person in the profession because everybody's carrying a camera in their pocket. But what makes the difference is obviously these tips that I'm giving you today. Is you know these are things that I employ on every single shoot that I do. Awesome. And I would say too, even uh, I'll tag into that. Even if you're at home or something like that. Take a look at what is in the background because sometimes you might have a dangling cord from a television mm-hmm. something and then you want to showcase your beautiful grandbaby mm-hmm. and then the eyeball is going to go to something in the background. So just take a quick look before you shoot the picture of what's Absolutely. behind the subject, right, Great, Margaret? perfect advice. And please stop shooting your selfies in bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Not a cute look. What about the one with the mirror where you're standing like this? Well, and you know? again, you know, this is, these are things that you can absolutely do, but as long as you pay attention to kind of the angle that you're shooting, just take a quick look around. Just that 30 seconds of looking around can save you a lot of problems set the stage absolutely absolutely um one more technical sort of trick my fourth tip of of this which um is something that professionals do and you can employ again in your selfies etc pro tip pro tip pro tip is the rule of thirds have we heard of this i've heard of it i I think i've heard of it yes okay when you're looking at a photograph imagine that there's a grid two lines down and two lines across what happens is the photograph is split into nine squares what you want to do is make the focus, uh, your subject, on one of the intersections. Oh, okay. okay. So never put, if you're shooting landscape, for example, never put the horizon down the middle. It's a boring photograph. Either mm. put it on the bottom, highlight the sky. Put it on the top and highlight the landscape. Same thing works with photographs. Make sure that your eye is on one of those intersections. It's Interesting. Now, dumb this down for me when you say intersections. Mm-hmm. So we've got nine squares. We've got nine squares. Yes. So with the two lines down, two lines across, you're going to have four intersections. Okay, got that it. one middle square. One of those intersections should be where Okay, the intersection is. of that middle square Correct. is what you're saying. Got exactly. It. Okay. So Understand. don't put anything directly in the middle. It's an amateur hour move. I've never heard of it and thought of it. That's there cool. you go. Pro tip. Pro tip. I love that. Right, Pro now tip. I understand the rule of thirds. I've heard of it. Now it makes sense to me. Well, some photographers like to use the golden ratio, a little bit more complicated, but the rule of thirds is something that's really simple and easy for you to see. And on your iPhones or your, your cell phones, you can see that they have the grid in there for you. That's right. You. Now we know why the so grid is there. So where those lines cross, put that over whatever subject you want to highlight. Perfect. Okay, that's really cool. And I have a last pro tip. Okay, okay. last pro tip. My last tip. Okay, tip number and again, five. This is my number five, and it works, again, for your cell phones or your DSLRs, and it's posing. Really simple, simple technique Ooh. for posing. Right. And it's different between men and women. Okay. And I'm going to use Lynn as an example here. So as the woman or the man? No, you're the man. I'm the woman. Okay, so women, no. <laughs> well, we can do it both ways, actually. Yes, all right. All right. We're, it's a group of three. We can make this work. Okay. In general, men folk, you want to face the camera. You want to look nice and broad across the shoulders, okay? Because that makes you look nice and masculine and makes you look nice and tall. Women, by comparison, very often will stand with our men like so. Okay. 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 But look, and you'll see this on the video when we watch it back, what you're going to do is actually turn 45 degrees. What this does is cut the woman in half because we women like to look thin in our photos. Let's face it, we do. And what it does is also make him look twice the size by comparison. Ah. So he looks more manly. I look more feminine. In, right and it gives the woman more curve and this works for all women doesn't matter your body type height and now we're ready short, for the prom and we're ready for the prom and it's instantly <laughs> going to make a photographer more popular it's because she's taking gonna, both subjects yes. and taking them and made them look fantastic absolutely and i would say to that end as well ladies please stop putting your hands on your hips we're not cheerleaders don't do that it's not a cute look <laughs> so I none know. of this no none no, of no, that no, 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 okay. even for you fellows okay, no no okay. no but my best pom-pom. advice is you do that. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to look for a slight change in your posing just to you know keep things fresh, mm-hmm. I know we do a lot of headshots and we want to get yeah. a little bit of variety. You can also turn slightly, point a, a shoulder toward the camera. But in general, gentlemen, face the camera, okay? We want, these we want you got it. You got it. I think, I think these so. are great tips. Even though they're pro tips, I think all five of these are going to be able to make me look like a pro Absolutely. at my next family gathering. Absolutely. And, else. and we'll make it easy. So if you're watching this on like maybe our website, under our blog, we'll have all five steps written out for you too. So you don't have to yeah. keep watching the video over and over if you need, but you can just copy and paste it, print it out, memorize the five tips so that way you're taking the absolute best photos possible. And you'll find they'll just become a natural reaction every time you lift a camera. So it's uh, it's pretty ooh. helpful. They just become habit. All right. All your photos will be second, pro level. It's a second language when you're taking photos. Indeed. Now. I know. That's and very who, cool. who knew we get all these inside tips and it's going to make Everyone yeah. out there, professional photographers. That, that's not helpful. We don't. No, want it's that. not helpful. No, no, no. no. 
No, you happen. still you still want to hire the pro. You still want to hire. That's tip number six. Your bonus tip. Yeah. Don't leave your special events no. for for your friend with a good camera or your cell phone. Make sure that you reach out to somebody who's actually Absolutely. trained to do this. Absolutely. Because you want the best uh, quality no. photo. What for it's going to do? It's going to up your game for those quick shots that yes. you take of family, friends, at outings to throw on Instagram. Your and selfies post, at whatever. the concert yeah. or yeah. your kids in the park. All of these tips will apply to all of those things and will instantly give your your photos a boost. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you, for you so much me. for the pro tips. Thank you, so much. you. I love visiting with you. MSP guys. is the best. <laughs> she is. Thanks so much. Thanks thank for you. watching. Thanks for watching. At the Sack and Stone team, our clients are always number one. Get in touch with us with a call, text, or email, and stay in touch. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.